quite proud of this. So I've had this ozone generator for the best part of two years and finally I have gotten to actually building it an enclosure. And it's pretty good though because the technology that I have at my disposal has evolved tremendously to the point where this is running off of a Type-C connector. So not only is this reversible, but it will be operatable. Operatable? Operatable. It'll work with power banks and what have you. And so yeah, this is standard toilet PVC piping. And just in case I want to feed this through a feed this into a smaller enclosure or something, I did actually buy it some uh, some pipe. This was actually more expensive than the rest of the PVC piping together, but anyway. And so this fits very neatly with a gasket, right? All of this shit is, is airtight. Fits over here. All right, technically this piece also fits in here, right? With a gasket, but it's so tight that I don't think I'll ever take it apart. Anyway, and yeah, so basically we have this pipe, uh, this, this tube feeding ozone to a random corner of my room now. And so let's go for a demo and then we'll go to a more regular uh, non-fisheye view and uh, go over how I've built it, uh, the schematic of everything and how I've hooked everything up and all that shit. So yeah, basically you have your Type-C to Type-C cable plug that into an adapter. In this case I'm using this um, Bezeus one. I am actually quite happy with it. Um, it works particularly well with the TS-80. So the TS-80 only gets 9 volts from its original charger but actually goes up to 12 with this one. I am running the custom firmware which you should as well. But anyway, and it also doesn't make any popping noises, right? So it's very low capacitance on the output I would assume right because this actually clips very hard right turns the turns the element on and off at like 10 to 30 hertz or something like that and a lot of chargers and power banks especially will will make that popping piezoelectric capacitor noise anyway this one does not do it super great and it's the correct orientation for my sockets which is a great plus anyway so we have this monitor here, you can see it's still turned off even though it is connected. It only gets power, like there's only power over the auxiliary lines, the auxiliary power lines. Um, with Type-C you actually have to ask for power, even, even if it's 5 volts you have to actively ask for it. And then it will be fed over the main uh, voltage lines, uh, main power bus. Uh, and this is throwing shit off my table. I suppose let's disconnect the, the tube. Oh, that's super needed. Alright. And so yeah, as I said, right, there's only power over the auxiliary lines now. And this trigger will have to talk over the channel configuration lines and actually tell the charger, yo, Give me 5 volts, give me 10 volts, 15, 12, 20. In this case it goes for 20 and if your charger cannot supply 20 it'll just settle for the best it can, right? Like 12 or 15 or stuff like that. So anyway it's asking for 20 and it should get it. And it does. And I'm drawing about 20 watts. And I will actually cover this. And yeah. It's actually working pretty nicely. I don't know if you can see the ozone. Hmm, you can. So let me actually pop this in right here. Can you see it? It's not visible, unfortunately. So anyway, I will turn this off because it already smells like ozone. Holy shit. <coughs> so yeah, I'll clear the room and come back in a moment. All right, so basically this is the block diagram of the entire operation. So everything basically revolves around this um, YZX Studio power delivery trigger. As I've said before, over a Type-C to Type-C cable you will not get absolutely any power over the main power lines unless you request it. And so that's the purpose of this uh, chip here. 
Um, given that they're made by YZX Studio, these are very nicely built and they have a 100% success rate in triggering the, the voltages needed. Uh, it's pretty nice, right? So uh, there's two variants. The green boards um, either ask for 15 or 20 volts and the blue boards ask for 9 or 12, I believe. Um, and so what will happen if you have a charger that does not support these voltages, it'll just go to the highest, uh, highest available. Next up is the constant current buck. So given that uh, this might work off of 12 volts, 9 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, I need some sort of dynamic power conditioning, so to say, power management. And this is achieved by this module here. These are quite inefficient, to be honest, but in this case, it's not uh, it's not a concern, right? This will not operate for long amounts of time, and mostly it will work off of uh, mains, so that's fine. One uh, little gotcha with these, uh, they use low side sensing for the current, so although you can technically assume there's a straight link across here, you can't use this in a three pin configuration and still have the um, the current reading. And actually if you use it in a three pin configuration, so for example, cross this out and you somehow get your line like this, I don't think it'll run at all actually. I think it really doesn't like that happening. Always thinks it's um, in overcurrent. I think, I'm not sure, anyway. Um, I've had problems with this. This is why I'm mentioning it, right? This particular one, definitely uh, keep an eye out. Then it goes directly to the ozone generator and the fan, which are just wired in uh, parallel. All right, so let's open it. And I actually don't remember exactly what voltage this runs at. I've uh, basically tailored it to run at 20 watts. And this is not the maximum output of this ozone generator, but it produces a fair amount, right? So given that I want this to eventually work off of power banks like the like the YZX Studio one I have here, um, I didn't want to go overboard with the power, right? I mean, you could definitely run up to 100 watts off of a Type-C connector, but eh, I don't know. That's a bit overkill. So yeah. Let's basically get this back in shot. So I have two basically grub screws holding the fan in. I've had to chop the edges off of it in order to get it to fit, but yeah, it does work. And it does stay in pretty snugly. have these very nice M5 Allen screws, which, mm, I don't know, all the best shit is Allen, so. Yeah, quite proud of that. All right, let's slide the fan out. Again, the angle is not ideal here. I will go handheld in a moment. All right, so there's, I've cut some slots in with, um, with the handsaw for the nuts. And yeah, basically, oh, how, how can we get this going? Yeah. So again, not a lot going on. So this is just a very average garden variety fan. That is the ozone generator inside. This is the constant current supply. It's just held in with a zip tie. But again, that's uh, plenty firm. I'm using some nuts as spacers. The nuts are M5, the screw, eh, the, no, the nuts are M6. The screws are M5, so that's a loose fit. That's fine. And then again, I previously broke this and uh, yeah, I'll actually cut to that now. All right, so one thing that I did notice is my affixation was pretty terrible and I did snap this. And it does have this row of uh, vias here and it did snap exactly there, unfortunately. Uh, it does still work though and I really don't wanna use another one. And so I'll just back it up with this uh, paper spacer and uh, tighten it up in different spots. And uh, yeah, I think that should be a good enough solution. 
should be staying in more snugly. And now I'm holding the actual USB connector instead of just the board. So hopefully that doesn't snap on me. But yeah, otherwise this is pretty much it. Uh, I was thinking of adding some feet to it, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It could just be this uh, tube thing. And yeah, quite proud of it. Uh, we'll see how powerful the ozone is, right? And basically my use case at the moment will be pumping ozone into cupboards that smell weird, old furniture, mm, after people smoke in my kitchen, I'm, I'm wondering if the ozone can clear the smoke smell instantly, right? Let's see. But uh, yeah, I mean, I have the ozone generator, so uh, what the hell? All right, if you have any questions, let me know and uh, have a good one.